Great example right now, Bitcoin. Bitcoin has multiple times pierced the 2017 high, never confirmed. Hello everyone, today our guest is Gareth Soloway. In this video, Gareth Soloway talks about Bitcoin's strange moves, its price predictions, macro situation impacting crypto and traditional market structure, Fed's potential pivot amid fears of recession, and much more on trading and going from rags to riches. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin price has kick-started a period of controlled selling and is currently approaching short-term support levels. A minor relief rally might occur before the next leg down to inefficiencies and liquidity. Investors need to be cautious since the current down move has broken significant levels that could trigger a massive sell-off in the future. Bitcoin price has been in a downtrend since its rejection at the $24,989 level. The volume profile between June 10 and August 19 shows that the highest traded level, ACA point of control, a key support and resistance level on the chart, has now shifted to $23,377. This development indicates that a lot of capital came into the market after a brief move above the 200-week SNA. Yet now sellers seem to be triumphant after the breakdown of the POC, as well as the 30-day exponential moving average at $23,226 and the 200-day simple moving average at $22,968. This triple breakdown is a significantly bearish development and does not bode well for upcoming events. However, stick around till the end as we reveal the potential crash limit for investors to keep in mind and the key support levels of Bitcoin. A lot of people were surprised when Bitcoin went below the 19.5-ish 2017 high. But if you, you understand how markets work, they tend to just go a little bit beyond key levels because there's a lot of stops put there. They need to run those stops. They have to get the maximum people bearish before the bounce can occur. So, so we saw, for instance, some bankruptcies, Celsius, Voyager, and some other situations as well that were really adding to that bearish sentiment. And that kind of led right into this bounce in the near term. And I still think the market has more upside in, in Bitcoin. So for me, the first target I have on the upside in the near term is that this pivot low, which was the Terra Luna low, that's probably a near term resistance level, right? We got close. We got within about a you know, thousand, a little over a thousand dollars away from that. But I still think that that will get hit after such a dramatic move up in Bitcoin, where it went almost straight from 19,000 to 24. It makes a lot of technical sense why price needs to pause, have a little bit of a pullback. We heard from Elon Musk yesterday with Tesla that that Tesla sold 75 percent of its Bitcoin. Uh, again, I don't think that was anything other than Elon Musk trying to just pare back some risk. But a lot of people that'll be used as a reason to sell their Bitcoin as well, since he has so many followers. So so for me, I'm looking at more of a 12, 13,000 ultimate bottom um, on Bitcoin. I also think that if you compare Bitcoin and say, OK, Bitcoin is the Amazon.com of its era, right? So, you know, monster company now, but in, in 2000, it, it was a smallish company, you know, not, not the size of Bitcoin, obviously, but it was kind of that, that leader. And we saw Amazon collapse actually 95% from its highs in the dot-com collapse. And Bitcoin hasn't even done 80% uh to 85 which is its normal cycle correction so so for me i look at that and then just to throw in one more thing and then i'll i'll i'll, I'll throw the the mic back to you is that we've seen we've seen a lot of this kind of bloodletting going on but i don't think we've seen all out panic and again if anything this crypto correction should be more substantial than past ones because the fed is not printing money anymore this is the first time in Bitcoin's lifespan, where the Fed has not been printing a ton of money. So that would lead me to be more cautious, thinking that we could see some further downside after a bounce here. Um, just the fact that the Fed is being more aggressive to fight inflation. So anyways, I love the fact that we have we have slightly differing opinions. Um, I think that's very helpful to, to everyone. And I'll throw it back to you on that note.
Yeah, so, so you're 100% right, is going against the herd is almost always the correct decision when you get to those extremes. And we certainly saw those extremes when we were below 19.5 and below that 2017 high. So I think in the very least, that that's exactly what I was looking at when I went long Bitcoin as a swing trade as well as the HODL position to get a little bit of exposure there. Um, but the question I would have is like, okay, so as we bounce up, so as soon as we've now bounced up to 22, 23, I think yesterday we hit 24, how quickly does the herd become too bullish again? And that would be one of one of the things that I would watch. And I'm sure something you're watching is to see, okay, does everyone then all of a sudden really quickly jump on the bandwagon? For it to be a true bottom, you want to see people be really, really nervous. Even when it bounces, you know, back to X amount, people are still like, mm, I don't know if I trust it. I'm still bearish. And so that's one of the things I'm really focused on here is is how quickly are people saying, okay, the bottom is in versus versus still being skeptical. And I, I think yesterday when we were at 24, we started to see some of that, but now that it's pulled back, it's kind of lessened a little bit. But it's certainly, you know, again, gauging that emotion of the crowd, of the of the masses is is the most important thing a trader can do aside from learning the technicals of the chart. So in terms of knowing how long the bear market can last, I think the only thing we can do is look at past bear markets. Um, at the same time, keep an asterisk near this one because it's different from the last ones, meaning the Fed is obviously tightening aggressively. Inflation is above 2%, much above. But in the, in, since Bitcoin's been around, it's really been 2% or under inflation, at least reported. Um, so you have these different things, but really, if you look at past cycles, it's been about 12 to 18 months that it takes for it to kind of bottom out. And then you kind of see what, what you really start to look for. And you can see here, so we had this initial drop, then a lot of chop. And by the way, for me, this is kind of where I think we are in Bitcoin. So this is 2017. My guess is we're kind of right in this area here, right? We just bottomed out. We're going to kind of do this. And then I think you might just get that one last dip, which will be the bottom level. This will kind of flush people out, that final flush um, that'll occur. But really what you can see here is you just, you traded sideways for a long period of time before that last flush. And then it was a beautiful rounded bottom. And again, there's there's not going to be anything you're going to be able to find that's going to be like, aha, this is 100% a bottom. But it's, it's more just again saying, okay, we have a rounded bottom. And then you start seeing, okay, once you start taking out some of these former levels, like to me, that would be something that I would watch is this was a very, very keen level. Once we got above there, notice how Bitcoin really got some serious upside action. Now, again, did we come back and retest it later on? Absolutely. Right here, you retested it, but it quickly recovered again and got back above that level. But again, the things like rounded bottoms, cup and handle patterns, you know, little things like that and taking out former support that are now resistance levels, those would be things that I would look for when it finally bottoms out, plus the emotional kind of capitulatory free, you know, panic, um, oh my goodness, is Bitcoin going to survive type mentality. Let's say something, let's give a practical example, right? So you're trading Bitcoin, drop 10% in a day, and you're feeling kind of, I don't know, a mix of anxiousness, panic, fear, if you want to call it that. Um, What's your next step? Because I mean, you, you're you're human after all. You're not a robot. You feel these emotions. I don't think I don't think I don't think you're trying to say to people don't feel emotions. I think you're just saying don't act on them, right? So what's yeah. your next step? You're, you're you're panicking right now. You're feeling a little bit of angst. What do you do? Yeah. So so I think what you do is you step back and you say, okay, well, you physically step back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, physically and emotionally. Okay, I right. mean, if you need to do it physically, and then <laughs> more power to you if that's where, what gets you there. But but I think you have to. You have to be able to start to look at yourself and have that introspective look at yourself and say, right. okay, yes, I'm feeling fear or I'm feeling greed, but now let me step back and say, okay, what is the chart telling me? What are these, these factors that I'm seeing in the chart telling me? And that'll ground you. It really does bring you back to earth. In fact, I had someone recently that said, you know, when, when Bitcoin was trading below 19,000, they were getting close to exiting and just throwing in the towel. Yeah. And then they, they remembered what I had said and what I had taught them. And they said, you know what, I stepped back 
And then all of a sudden, before I knew it, Bitcoin had rallied back up. And thank yeah. goodness I didn't react to my emotion. Right. So it's it's that ability to look at yourself and to start thinking more robotically. And by the way, emotion's great in life, right? And love and, and empathy, sympathy. I mean, those are all great times to have emotion. Just mm -hmm. in trading, it will inevitably work against you. And I'm telling you, there are bots, there are algorithms that the, the, the institutions have that know max pain levels on both sides of the market. Mm -hmm. And they will push the market to that level, knowing that if we can get Bitcoin or, or Apple above this level, we'll get a bunch of people to either jump long, or if it's down to the downside, we'll get them to exit the trade, and then we'll just whip it back the other way. I mean, th th this is it's used against investors. They have to get control of their emotion. It could take a while for us to get back to 68, 69,000 in Bitcoin. It took quite a long time for the NASDAQ to get back to the pre-dot-com era highs. I also think that to wipe out the nonsense, you may even have to go below my low end target of around 12,000 on Bitcoin. I hate to say this and I don't mean to scare anyone. And by the way, in all fair and fair disclosure, I own Bitcoin that I'm gonna be holding from around 19,000, right? A small position I started to inch in because I don't know where the low is gonna be, but I'm preparing for the worst case scenario of 3,500. Wow. Yeah, yeah, It's and again, just to be clear on that, as a trader, and this is going back to education, if there's one thing I've learned in, in my trading career is that you prepare with your targets, but you also prepare for a worst case scenario. You need to look at your worst case scenario and figure out how am I gonna react? What am I gonna do if this does happen? And play defensively. So so there's there's one thing that I look for with, with any level. So it could be a trend line, it could be a moving average or anything. If you break below, number one, that could be a fake out. So a lot of investors put stops right below key levels. Well, guess what? The algorithms know these things. So mm -hmm. what they're gonna do is they're gonna pierce that level knowing that your stop is gonna get triggered, you're gonna get out of your position, and then oftentimes they'll rip it the other way. Great example right now, Bitcoin. Bitcoin has multiple times pierced the 2017 high, never confirming. What I use as a confirming signal, which is something we'll talk about in a little bit in, in something that I'm gonna be teaching. But basically, there's been these whipsaws and then it goes right back above that 2000. So, so basically you have to watch to see, does it confirm below that level? If it confirms, then it's a real breakdown. If not, I don't get out when it pierces a level like that until it confirms. Mm. BTC price has moved to the lower limit of its ascending parallel channel in search of support. The volume profile shows the possibility price could completely slice through the bottom of the channel and retest a support area, extending from $21,300 to $20,300. Bears are likely to push Bitcoin priced down to this level before taking a short break. From a price action standpoint, $19,248 represents a stable support level which extends to $18,608. So, answering the question of crash limits and key support levels, from the perspective of a short to mid-term outlook, investors can expect a 15% crash, especially if the ascending parallel channel breaks down at $22,160. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.